please. Tell me when you're ready. Can I just drop? Now? Oh, okay. Those were some poorly hey. coordinated sound effects. Hello, everyone. It is Wednesday once again, which means it's time for a new episode of the new Comic Book Day Rundown. I am Dustin. I'm the PR coordinator for Dark Horse Comics. And I am Kara. I am the social media coordinator. And we are psyched to bring you all of these lovely items that we are going to discuss on today's show. Uh, as a reminder, if you would like to win all of these awesome books and expand your comics collection and knowledge, uh, you have said opportunity. Uh, today, all you have to do is share this video on your Facebook page. Uh, make sure that it is a public share so that we are able to see it and find you and tell you that you are a winner, baby. We'll send you some free comics. Yes, so uh, make sure to do those shares. We will be back to you by tomorrow a.m. to let you know if you are the lucky winner of this fabulous collection of items. And remember that if you have any questions about Dark Horse comics or products, feel free to drop those questions in the comments below. Uh, we will either try to answer those today or on next week's show. And bonus, to show that we are in fact listening to you, we have gotten a ton of questions lately yeah. about Mike Mignola, uh, the creator of Hellboy and its various spinoffs and what is going on with that universe and that publishing program. There has been a lot of exciting news lately, so we are going to have a very special guest join us at the end of today's episode uh, to answer some of those burning questions for you. So stay tuned. Watch until the end. The big finale. And before that, we of course have this week's digital sales to talk to you about, so I'm gonna let Kara take it away. And speaking of Mike Mignola. Speaking of, uh, because we have some new Mike Mignola titles coming out, uh, we also are gonna offer a digital sale. It's a BPRD mega bundle. So if you go check out digital.darkhorse.com, right now there is a huge sale. It's 200, more than 200, it's 207 issues of BPRD for only $99.99. That is a crazy deal. Um, if you are curious about the reading order of those titles, our special guest will talk more about that later, but you can also go to multiversity.com. They have a great reading list on there. Um, it's all updated, and again, we'll talk about that a little bit more later, but BPRD, get the whole collection right now for only $99.99. That's crazy. That's uh, it is a crazy deal. And June is also Pride Month, so in order to celebrate that, Dark Horse is also doing a month-long sale for the entire month of June uh, that is gonna be a big sale on our LGBTQ inclusive titles. Um, so that's gonna be all kinds of things like ElfQuest, uh, Legend of Korra. It's also gonna include Zodiac Star Force. Uh, Black Hammer is also included on that uh, due to my favorite character, Barb Alien. Uh, reconciling his uh, life uh, as a Martian who is also living as a closeted gay man uh, human on Earth. So that is a great interesting story. Away. So this is also a good excuse to get caught up in Black Hammer, which yeah. I highly recommend. Uh, and there's also a slew of other fantastic titles uh, included in that sale. Uh, this is going to give you digital graphic novels for $3.99 and single issues for only 99 cents. So that is a great deal going on all month. Um, and as per usual, we will drop links for both the Pride Sale and the BPRD Mega Bundle in the comments once we are done with our live broadcast. Yes, indeed. Well, now we will move on to physical comics, and starting with, we have a new number one this week. It's Halo Collateral Damage. This is written by Alex Irvine with art by Dave Crossland and colors by Leonard O'Grady, and this cover art is actually by Zach Hartong. Um, so this is a Master Chief tale. The Master Chief and Blue Team have been deployed by the UNSC to Alpha Corvi 2, a precarious human colony world seeking to halt the Covenant's efforts to uncover something hidden below the planet's surface. Uh, the Spartan Strike team quickly finds out they will have to rely on each other and a small cadre of human rebels in order to survive and complete their mission. So for Halo fans, this has been getting really, really good reviews so far. People are really enjoying the story of the Master Chief. This kind of goes back in time and shows you a Master Chief that uh, is, is earlier than what you're used to in the games. You'll even see him without his helmet at one point, which is crazy stuff. Um, so Halo fans are definitely going to want to pick this one up today. Collateral damage number one. Yeah, and you are right about the reviews. I was reading a lot of the reviews this morning that were coming in, uh, super positive. Can't remember exactly which site it was, but it was basically saying if you are a fan of science fiction, this is good mm -hmm. and you'd probably enjoy it, uh, even with minimal knowledge of Halo. Yeah. But that if you are a Halo fan, it is great and an absolute must buy. So those too. are their words, not mine. 
Uh, on to a new number one today as well. Uh, we have got Sword Daughter number one. This is from Brian Wood and Mac Chater. Uh, this is going to be a, a, a Viking revenge story that's sort of inspired by samurai cinema. So it's kind of intentionally an homage to the lone wolf and cub kind of setup uh, where we've got a father Viking and his young daughter. Uh, they are the sole survivors uh, when their entire village is murdered uh, by a group of people called the 40 Swords. They come at night, they killed their whole village and burned it down, and they set off on a revenge quest that's going to span the width of Viking Age Europe. Uh, they're going to find the key to repairing their damaged relationship. Uh, and Sword Daughter is visually stunning. It's emotionally poignant, a story of parental guilt and acceptance of loss. Um, Mac Chater is a fantastic artist. Um, and he also offered the variant cover that you'll see here. Regular cover is by Greg Smallwood. Um, yeah, this is this is great. Um, Brian Wood does great action work. Um, it's also got uh, a fantastic per, kind of. You, I'm not sure how well you're going to be able to see this in the video, um, but it's got a premium paper quality, so it's a little bit thicker paper stock. Um, just a really nice, high quality presentation on this series. So. And Nate Picos came up with some really innovative lettering for this because the daughter, the sword daughter, doesn't really speak much. Um, so instead there are symbols for a lot of her speech, which is really, really fascinating. They came up with that all for this comic. Mm. Dustin, yeah. someone says great haircut. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Well, Dr. Star, I think, also has pretty great hair. Actually. Yes, he does. That he is does. true. Oh, so this is I'm, I'm going to show you Dr. Star's hair. Um, this, is, <laughs> this is the final issue in this miniseries, set in the Black Hammer universe by Jeff Lemire. Um, the full title is Dr. Star and the Kingdom of Lost Tomorrows, which, if you're reading this, you are getting a sense of what that means. Um, this series is fantastic. I honestly can't say enough good things about it. This particular issue uh, made me get something in my eye. Um, I think I think you're gonna find the same you... thing to happen to you. Um, you might it's... mysteriously find yourself cutting onions. Yeah, it's yeah. Um, so just be <laughs> forewarned. Uh, this one is sad, um, but also beautiful. Uh, the illustrations are by Max Fiumara, who just does a fantastic job. The colors, Dave Stewart, lettering again by Nate Picos. He's on a lot of our titles. Um, this series is tragic, but brilliant. I love it. I can't talk about it enough. Um, so this is former hero Dr. Star. He's desperately been trying to save his ailing son. Um, he's searched the galaxy to find a cure, but ultimately in this last issue of this miniseries, he's going to have to choose whether he will leave it all behind and go off on more adventures, or if he will return home for good and stay with his son. So this is another example of Jeff Lemire kind of showing you the other side to being a superhero. And again, you don't have to have read Black Hammer to actually understand these and enjoy them. Um, you can just jump right on with Dr. Star, or you can also go back and read Black Hammer because I can't recommend that series enough either. And then there's also Sherlock Frankenstein all in the same universe. We have also got the famed 300 prequel from Frank Miller. This is Xerxes, The Fall of the House of Darius and the Rise of Alexander, number three of five, uh, just Xerxes for short. Uh, this is offering a more introspective look at Xerxes. Um, I wanna show you this because one of the coolest things about this series is that not only are the covers double page spreads, um, but the interiors are as well. Um, let's look at this guy, actually. That's a good one. Uh, Frank Miller is back. He's better than ever. Um, I am loving this series. The art is absolutely gorgeous. One of a kind, classically Frank Miller. Um, yeah, digging this story. So uh, this is uh, on a military campaign to silence a Greek rebellion. Xerxes, the Persian prince, watches his father, King Darius, fall in battle uh, while his newly inherited fleet retreats toward home. Xerxes' hatred is cemented towards Athens. Uh, Xerxes is determined to prevail. Um, yeah, so pick that up from Frank Miller today. It's a very artistic issue like that also yes. has been getting really well reviewed and i'm very happy to see how well received it's been um it's kind of a more internal dive into like what's going on in xerxes head so that's a good one to check out 
Uh, moving over into books, this is a big one out today. We have Mobius Library, uh, Inside Mobius Part 2. This is a new hardcover in our ongoing Mobius Library series. Mobius, of course, uh, Giraud is a famous artist that you should know if you don't. Uh, he's a fantastic kind of surreal sci-fi artist. Um, in this particular book, he is actively exploring his own storytelling methods within his own mind. Uh, he draws himself encountering his own favorite characters in an expansive desert setting. He interacts with Blueberry, Stell, Atan, and others, and he meets younger versions of himself. This is a self-reflective six-part study. Um, so this collects the two middle chapters in this unique exploration of a creator overanalyzing his own thought process as he creates new comics. So if you're not reading these, um, you don't really have to start anywhere in particular, but if you have read part one, this will kind of go seamlessly into the next part. And again, we have more Mobius Library editions coming soon. Yeah, and the Mobius Library is a big deal because um, Jean-Gerard Mobius is a French artist and comic creator, and so most of his work has never been translated into English. Mm -hmm. um, so we're doing that here at Dark Horse, bringing this out in a beautiful uh, hardcover collections for you that uh, is hopefully going to introduce an entire new generation to the work of Mobius, who is probably one of the most important, prolific She's comics really creators that has ever existed. So. Um, Definitely worth it for the comics education. Plus, his work <laughs> is so fun. Uh, love it, love this, it, love this it. This is a really fun and funny book, actually. Yeah, it, the Inside Mobius series, particularly yeah. because it's very self deprecating, is uh, just um, tremendously fun. Um, we have also got, uh, speaking of classic uh, comics creators, this uh, little book here is going to include an encounter with Will Eisner's The Spirit. Uh, this is Michael Chabon's The Escapist pulse-pounding thrills in trade paperback. So the Golden Age superhero, The Escapist, who is a master of illusion and a champion of liberation, was originally conceived in the fictional world of the Pulitzer Prize-winning novel The Amazing Adventures of Cavalier and Clay by the one and only Michael Chabon. Uh, this comic book is an anthology that collects a multitude of The Escapist adventures, and, and as I said, including an encounter with Will Eisner's The Spirit. Uh, this contains a total of 20 two tales along with three never before collected stories uh, and it's a volume that also contains five never before uh, published stories and a robust gallery of pinups celebrating the world of the escapist let's take a peek inside <laughs> I love this if you loved the amazing adventures of Cavalier and Clay now you get to read the comics based on the characters from that I think that's fantastic so cool and of course we have a lot of Mignola to discuss. Yeah, if you were wondering why we haven't talked about those yet, it's because we have a special guest who is going to be joining us now. Please welcome Katie O'Brien. Hey, Katie! Yeah, where's, there it is. Good sound effects. There we are. Hi, Katie. Hi. How, Hi. Are, how are you? <laughs> You've seen Katie before on this show. She's a nope. uh, uh, not too infrequent guest of the new yes. Comic Book Day Rundown, but today we have her as a special guest because she also happens to be the editor of all of Mike Mignola's titles here at Dark Horse, so that's it's no big, big deal. It's a, I, was, yeah. I was gonna say the opposite. I was like, that is a huge job. That's a huge job. Depending on what level of sarcasm you're, you're yeah. 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 We're, on, we're on opposite ends, I guess. Today. I mean, we are on the opposite ends of the sarcasm spectrum today. We flip flop. We, we trade. So. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so this week is no different than others where we have multiple Mignola titles. Um, we should talk about each one of these first, maybe before doing a deep dive. Um, do you want to start with Jenny Finn? Maybe tell us a little bit about this. Sure. So Jenny Finn is actually a book that came out starting in 1999. It was published at two different publishers before we finally got our hands on it. It's a Lovecraftian sort of story, much like much of Mignola's work. However, this one he wrote together with Troy Nixie, who also drew the first three issues. It takes place in uh, Victorian London at a time that there are a bunch of murders going on and also a strange kind of plague that's giving people tentacles and spreading fins and just a lot of bad, a lot of bad things going on. And there's a mysterious girl named Jenny Finn who has just arrived who may or may not but is basically the cause of all of it. So we actually had it colored for the first time by Dave Stewart, who is our favorite colorist in the Mignolaverse. And um, we published the four issues last year, but now we have the hardcover edition, and it is just so beautiful. So Troy Nixie did the first three issues, the wonderful Farrell Dalrymple did the final one. 
and we are just so excited to have it in hardcover now. It's really great if you like Victorian mysteries. It's great if you just like a sort of a supernatural thriller. And it definitely fits in with much of Mike's work. So for all I of the, the fans of is, is beautiful. Yes, we went straight to hardcover on this one because it's classy and so are we. It's <laughs> Well Keeping said. it classy well with said. tentacle diseases. Yes. Yeah, you know, and as much as you fish. can. I really, I really like the doom fish. Oh, as yeah, much as you the little it. fish. If you like yeah. fish, this could be a good book for you. It, it is, actually. <laughs> but there's also giant turtle monsters, or ah, tortoise yes. monsters, in Hellboy and the BPRD 1955. So this is a collection as yes. well. I'll actually hand this to you. Look, right. you kind of made that a little bit. Can we, can we yeah. talk really quickly about how much I love that cover? It's like the tortoise yes. is doing a pinup pose, like over the shoulder. It kinda. is. It oh. is. Over the shoulder yes. smolder. Yeah. This oh, is smolder. <laughs> this cover is by Paolo Justin Rivera. Rivera. We just love him. We absolutely love his work. He did a one shot that is collected in this book. We also have a three parter by Brian Chirilla and another one shot by Sean, Sean Martin Bro. Uh, yes, this is a collection of a bunch of different stories that have come out. Um, if you've been reading the Hellboy and the BPRD series, we've been going through the 50s, so this is our latest one. And the next one, which we haven't announced any timeline for yet, will be coming out soon, but I can't tell you when because <laughs> our publicists will be upset. Um, <laughs> so that will be coming out soon. But yes, this turtle, can I talk about the turtle for a second? Please do. So, okay, so this is a, a leatherback turtle. I love them. They're maybe the biggest sea turtle that there is, but uh, we were very interested in getting one into a comic, and Chris Robertson actually had a giant sea turtle in the story already, so I pitched the leatherback idea, and we went for it. They have these amazing mouths, and uh, we added a little bit where Hellboy is talking about how mutated it is, <laughs> and the crazy mouth, and then Woodrow Ferrier, who was a cryptozoologist, was like, well, actually, that's just a normal leatherback turtle feature. They all have the spiky mouths. And uh, that was that fun. Is the story so that's of the my turtle. main accomplishment. She's like, and, thus I'm, far. and I'm retiring now. Yes. <laughs> and, uh, it's been lovely. Crowning achievement. But, uh, yeah, there we are. It's good stuff. And buy it for the turtle of nothing else. I love him. He made the cover. He's amazing. I'll let you say the title so oh, I don't slaughter it because somehow I manage to say it wrong every time. I'm still trying. I'm pretty <laughs> sure. We were saying Koski and then we were saying Koshki, and now I'm pretty sure it's Koshke, but like maybe Koshke. If anyone speaks Russian, please tell us. Um, anyway, oh. we are doing our best. But this is the sixth issue in a series that we have all loved working on so much. It is Hellboy Down in Hell with Koshki the Deathless, who tried to kill him before it you know worked out to no real degree <laughs> but we've certainly seen Koshki before so this is just a really fun story with Hellboy and Koshki sitting in a pub in hell there are pubs there why wouldn't there be just talking through different stories of how they both ended up there various things with the Baba Yaga one of our biggest hero heroes villains, villains. <laughs> depends on who you root for but yeah, it's generally a villain <laughs> if there were ever a universe where those lines are blurred it's, it's this possibly one. this, this one uh, one of our biggest villains though and it has just been such a fun series it is really Mike and Ben at their best they do such magical work together so this is the last one I'm a little sad about it but we've you know we've all put in a lot of hard work so I hope you all really like it <laughs> but as you can see and imagine with these um, that will be collected as well yes, yes. And I love it because that just has the easiest elevator pitch ever, which is just <laughs> Hellboy and Koshki have a beer together in hell. Yeah. And talk about things. Yeah. That's um, it. I love it's it. so good. This this series has been fantastic. Like, it's so well received. I love it. Yeah. It's It may sound like a simple premise, but it's so fun. Like, it's so interesting. It's yeah. such an interesting story. There's a lot that goes on. Well, and because so much of the debate, looking back at conversations, it just mm -hmm. gives us so much room to play within... With it. You're not constrained by any time or place because it's all kind of a retrospective. Exactly. So, and it ties in like this last issue ties in right with what's going on in BPRD right now. Yes, it does. Which you should catch up on if you're not caught up on. Uh, seriously, there's a lot going on. Which brings us to some of the questions that people have been asking recently, such as, will there be a hardcover version of Hellboy and the BPRD 1955 or, you know, a collection of the 50s? So, generally, the way we approach hardcover collections with most of these books is that once we have about three volumes, we'll put them together in an omnibus. So, we are starting to make plans with the 1950s books. So, the first one will probably be 
1952, 53, and 54. Uh, we don't have a timeline for that at this point. There's nothing I can say about that. But we will be moving them to hardcover as they continue to come out. But there will not be a hardcover of just this volume on its own. And then related to that, people were also asking, will there be more of these Hellboy and the BPRD adventures you know, set in the various decades? Yes, our plan is to continue with Hellboy and the BPRD as pretty much our main series. BPRD, as many of you probably know, is on its final storyline. The devil you know is the third act of BPRD is what we consider it to be. And I cannot tell you when that's ending either, but it is ending at some point. <laughs> And uh, so at that point, pretty much Hellboy and the BPRD is going to be our main series going forward. So we're very excited about that. We are going to keep the 50s stories going, but we are also going to start jumping around a little bit. We'll continue with the 50s, but we'll move around a little. And it's going to become more like Hellboy and or the BPRD. <laughs> sometimes it'll be more Hellboy. Sometimes it'll be more BPRD. We have a lot of great BPRD agents that we've really gotten to see develop in these stories. So we'll be you know, following all of them along. And as we know from where the story starts in the 90s, most of them are not still around at that point. So we'll get to yeah. see their whole story eventually. Right. So you get so more yes. of the characters that you love. Exactly. Yeah. So yes, definitely more plans, full steam ahead. Awesome. Um, and for anybody that's not caught up on uh, Hellboy and the BPRD and that extended universe, um, one of the questions that we're getting is that we've obviously announced that we're doing an omnibus program yeah. uh, with a lot of those older editions. Mm -hmm. um, do you want to kind of explain, the question is like what order to read things in and what is generally happening with that program. So you wanna, can you help kind of clear that up for folks? Is the Hellboy omnibuses? Yes. yes. Yeah. So we've started putting those on sale. I think the first ones came out in May or June. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, breakneck speed with these. We want to just get them out for you guys right away. So the Hellboy story, which main the main Hellboy comics is 12 volumes of just Hellboy. Hellboy and Hell, which is two volumes, three original graphic novels, and a few one-shots and various bits that have ended up in trades like Hellboy in Mexico. All of that is being collected in actual story chronology, the year that the stories take place, as opposed to publication chronology. And that is what the six omnibuses are. So the main Hellboy story, which begins with Seed of Destruction, is going to be omnibuses one through four, ending with Hellboy and Hell. And all of the shorter stories that take place prior to that, Pam Cakes, a lot of our other <laughs> favorites, that take us right up until Seed of Destruction, are in two short story volumes, which is volumes one and two. So those will be the sort of extra fun stories, but Hellboy's main story is in omnibuses one through four. So there you have it. So that's where it and starts. And more of those are coming out this month. Like mm -hmm. you said, they're coming out real quick, one after the I other. I think they'll all be out by September, I Yeah, believe. I think so. Yeah, so you'll be able to get them all very soon. So yeah, no joke No joke with breakneck speed. Yeah, so yeah, six soon. omnibus, that's mm -hmm. going to collect the complete chronology uh, of Hellboy. So that will be very convenient. Mm -hmm. um, you did an interview recently with 13th Dimension. I did. Um, which is pretty cool. Look at you doing fancy media interviews. It was fancy. It was so fancy. It was scary. Um, so tell, tell people, we'll drop a link for that too, because yeah. that's a, it's a great piece and you get to know Katie a little bit better. We, we um, shared it the other day. Look for the drinking with skeletons uh, yes. bit. Yeah. So what was your, um, how did you narrow it down to what you included in because that, that 13 difficult. I bet. yeah there's so, too much the piece is 13 panels and panel sequences that capture the magic of the Hellboy universe initially I wanted to do 13 panels but so many of them are like a couple panels that just really work together because that's what comics is right. so I was like, you know what? I'm gonna art. just do that so the first thing I did was cheat by doing that and then <laughs> the second thing I did was cheat by making two of them a tie so I ended up with 14 instead of 13 everything for 13th dimension has to be lists of 13 Right. Um, so, it's but I in a, in a bonus. I showed them. I guess <laughs> <laughs> it was it was really fun. But the two that I put in as a tie, two classics that even if you're not super familiar with Hellboy, you've probably seen are the monkey with the gun sequence mm -hmm. and the drinking with skeletons panel. So those two got put in as a tie because I was like, well, I can't leave them out. They're too classic. They're too well known. They so capture what these books are. Right. So I let them share a spot. As far as the rest of it, it was really difficult. There are a lot of panels that, you know, I'm sure for all of us, the comics that we've read, you just think of certain moments, certain panels that really sort of hit you in the right way, whether it's something that you really personally relate to, something that just feels like, oh, this is what the story is about, that just really encapsulates the themes and the mood and the character, 
or something that's just really funny. We have a lot of that in the Manualverse. So there are some funny ones in there. But I had a few, a lot, <laughs> that came to mind right at the beginning. So I started making a list of those. And then, because I felt like there was more that I was missing, I went back over the last few weeks and flipped through a lot of the trades and the hardcovers to be like, what else am I thinking of? Because sometimes it doesn't necessarily stick with you forever, but it's just such a great moment. So it was difficult. I went through and then had a list of about 20-ish that I narrowed it down to the first time, and then that still isn't 13. So I did more trimming. <laughs> it's not. And I was like, maybe I can just pretend that I can't count. <laughs> How many can I get away with if I just have like three 15s in there? And then there shouldn't be a 15 at all, so that's a bad plan. It's it was tough. Well, yeah, that's it's, a lot. it's a good list. We'll it we'll definitely fun. share the link again for you because if you yeah. haven't looked at it, you should check it out. I tried to find a good balance of the ones that were sort of more emotionally hard hitting versus mm -hmm. the humorous ones versus the ones that are just like, yeah, this is what these books are. Right. <laughs> I thought I thought you picked a really good range. I mean, I, I like that you included. You know, you picked one to kind of summarize a whole theme, like uh, the bird being a, an example of all of his like close in detail work. Yes. She Which are a lot elements of elements that I love too. Yep. And yeah. as far as I can tell, that is the first one. I did go back and flip through everything prior to that <laughs> to make sure. I'm pretty sure. Like in Kashi, Kashi, Kashki, however you like to say it, with the nightingale and his little musical note. Yes. Yes, that's one of my favorites. So good. Yeah, sometimes it's just the character that's just been designed so well. <laughs> and that is one thing. Talk about the nightingale and Kashki, Kashke. When the when the trade comes out, we have a phenomenal sketchbook section in this. Yes. Mike has some stuff in there, and Ben has some stuff in there, and you can really see all the different iterations of the Nightingale in particular. <laughs> it is a page just full of it, like really packed full of Nightingale sketches. It's Excellent. fantastic. That's good tattoo ma material yes. right there. Ooh, oh, yes. like yeah. Yeah. We do get a lot of Hellboy yeah. Universe tattoos yeah. Yeah. sent our way. sleeve of Nightingales. Of Nightingales. Oh. <laughs> That's actually... Kind of please, if you do that, please send a picture. Yes, we're, we're all going to do that at San Diego. We're, right? all, <laughs> that, yes. we're all getting nightingale sleeves. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, another common question that we get a lot is what is coming up in the Mignolaverse? Is there anything that you can tease? So, uh, teasing. I can tell you about a few things that we have just starting now. Um, Witchfinder is back for volume five. This is the Gates of Heaven. We have a new artist this time, Disraeli, who's yeah. his art is like so unusual but it works so well and it's so different that our letterer Clem Robbins who letters all of our Mignola stuff actually used an entirely different typeface for it which might sound like it's a small thing but it's pretty much the same for every Mignola book so it actually is a really big departure right but it's just about getting it to sort of fit with the art and have it tell the weird story that it is and what I can tell you is that this Witchfinder story actually ties in to a lot of older themes that we've seen in BPRD involving different characters and different monsters and people, like <laughs> types of people, if I can not people, give that away, <laughs> um, that we've just touched on in the past that we'll sort of see again. So it really does tie much more into the whole Hellboy universe than some of the previous volumes have in a really exciting way. So that is just starting up now. Um, yeah, issue year, number one of that came out last week. Issue number yeah, one we came out, it. yeah, just just the um, the end of May. So we're just at the beginning of that. You don't need to worry about catching up at all. Much more to come. <laughs> yes, and then BPRD is obviously in a huge moment right now. I won't spoil yep. anything if anyone's waiting for trades, but it's <clears throat> it's getting very serious with BPRD. Certain yes. people have returned. Uh, there's a lot that's going to be going on, particularly in this this current batch of five issues that we're in, six through 10, is gonna be really huge. You're not going to wanna miss any of that. And I can't say what, but I can say that we will have a couple of new things coming back in the fall. So the announcements for that will be coming in the next few months. Some of it will be returns of series that we've had in the past, coming back for more. And we have one entirely new, <laughs> entirely new miniseries that's coming in as well. And then in a few months too, we will be announcing the lineup for this year's Hellboy Winter Special which is fantastic. I can tell you all that it's gonna be great. You're gonna be so excited, but I can't tell you what it is. <laughs> so That's in short, to know. <laughs> in short, there are some things coming up somewhere with someone. At some point. At some at point. Some time. So stay tuned. Yeah. <laughs> Love it. Stuff. Stuff and things. Yeah. TBD. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. 
Don't go away. B-Y-O-B. Um, bring your own books. B-Y-O-B-P-R-D. B- B-Y-O-B. Yes. B-Y-O-B-P-R-D. yes. That was sitting right in front of me. Oh was sitting right in front of me. Yeah. B-Y-O-B-P-R-D. Love it. Okay. okay. On oh, that note, we got it. We did Hellboy whiskey at one point. We so. did. That's true. Ooh, that's right. Yes. That's right. And we did a beer, and we've done Hellboy wine. So actually, hey. got an entire Whatever. bar of Hellboy pick, stuff. Pick your poison. Mm-hmm. You, know? yes. <laughs> you got it all. And drink it in hell with Kashki. There and you skeletons. go. And I'm skeletons. <laughs> all right. Well, I think that's pretty much it. That, that that's a lot of it stuff up for now. All right. So thank you for your thoughtful uh, Mignolaverse questions. Yes, thank you, thank Katie, you. for joining yes, us to answer right. those. <laughs> And uh, we shall see you all next week. Don't forget to share this video if you would like an opportunity to win all of the items that we discussed here today. And uh, check out those digital sales. There's lots of good stuff in there. So if, if this uh, itched your curiosity for Hellboy and the BPRD, uh, that BPRD Mega Bundle is going to be great for you to check out. So yep. tune in next week. <laughs> Bye, guys. We'll see you next time.